it took me a while and it wasn't a case of like I want to do this straight away I did think about it and it was a scary thing to do and spoke to a lot of people to get out that mindset and you know, every time I got paid in the 15th of the month I kept thinking that's not going to happen if I leave From GoFounder, it's Business Knobs. Why is it called Business Knobs, you might ask? Well, there might well be a few knobs on the podcast, me being one of them. But what it stands for is Business No Bullshit. This podcast series is all about the trials, tribulations and occasional successes of starting and growing a business without the Hollywood filter. I'm Eddie Whittingham, and on the show today, I'm joined by Shalina Begum to talk openly about what it's really like to make that jump from being an employee to your own boss. A lot of people think about starting their own business, but when push comes to shove, a lot of people never seem to quite make that jump. Sometimes it can be through fear, trepidation, or personal circumstances. In fact, making the jump can be one of the biggest barriers to starting your own business in the first place. Direction and saying goodbye to my job that I was doing was really hard. Yeah. And you know, when I decided that I'm going to do this, I spent two weeks just crying because I was excited but crying that I was leaving behind something and mm. worried that what if I don't get that feeling back. <laughs> Shalina is an award-winning journalist a title she's had for over 20 years, and most recently, the business editor of the Manchester Evening News. She spent her entire working career covering stories about new businesses and interviewing the entrepreneurs behind those successes, and, of course, the failures. Only, Shalina isn't a journalist anymore. She's a brand new business owner, having decided to take the plunge and start her own PR and media company. We join Shalina just weeks into starting her own business to talk about what the transition from employment to being the CEO of a one-man band is really like. Oh, and a quick note just before we start. Apologies, the sound isn't perfect in places throughout this episode. Much like most new ventures, this is definitely a learning process. So please bear with it. You'll soon forget about it. So Shalina, today what I wanted to talk about was well, really delving into that moment people decide to leave employment and go into becoming a startup owner. It's quite a big moment in everyone's lives, particularly on that startup journey. And I just wanted to delve a little bit into that and and find out a bit more about your journey. Obviously, I can share a bit more information about mine, but I think it's such a important part of a journey that people take that it's, it's a good thing to delve into. And obviously, you're very new to your own business, so what better time to sort of delve into that, really? So just to start with, could you just give me a brief bit of history about, you know, what you've done for the last however many years, <laughs> and we'll go into a bit more detail. Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, I've been a journalist for the um, past 21 years, and if you asked me 10 years ago, I think I'd have said I'd be a journalist for the rest of my life, and I think maybe you know, that will never go away. Yeah. But um, the last 10 years, I've been doing business journalism. And the past five years, I've been set up for the Manchester Evening News. So I've spent a lot of time in the past decade interviewing other entrepreneurs. And when you interview entrepreneurs and business owners and startups, and you feel part of this like growth journey in Manchester, you can't help but get excited about the possibilities that can happen. And, you know, these people are doing it and... I always thought, you know, if they can do it, why can't I? But then I've, that's it. I've never really thought much more about it. But um, in December, I turned 40 and I started thinking about the next stage of my career. I wasn't sure what that was going to be. but It was in the back of my mind that, you know, I could do this for another couple of years. But, you know, at some point I did want to make a change. I wasn't sure what that change would be. And then... The pandemic happened and lockdown and it's been tough on all industries, including the media. Yeah. And the group Reach PLC were making redundancies and chance for voluntary redundancy came up. And I just thought maybe this is the time to take that leap. You know, I was at home for a while. I was furloughed, unfurloughed, and it just gave me time to 
think about it a bit more and maybe had I been working still and pandemic hadn't ha- happened I might not have given it much thought but being at home with the kids just made me think about the next stage of my career and mm. the fact that I probably did want to spend more time at home and it just gave me that kickstart that I needed and you know it took me a while and it wasn't a case of like I want to do this straight away I did think about it and it was a scary thing to do and spoke to a lot of people well yeah because you've been in employment for 21 years 21 years yeah and to get out that mindset and you know, every time I got paid on the 15th of the month I kept thinking that's not going to happen if I leave absolutely and that's I, one of the biggest fears <laughs> so um but you know having the opportunity to take voluntary redundancy meant that I don't have to worry and panic about it too much. And maybe if I hadn't had that, I probably would still be working. That's interesting. I think that's a good point. Because I think you, I think most people who go on to start their own businesses tend to have a, a trigger, for want of a better phrase. So it's either maybe that they're not enjoying their job, which was which was my case. I I was in a role that I didn't love. And I just mm-hmm. thought, is this, is this everything? Am I going to do this forever? Um, and my... I guess the trigger that set me off to, to then start my own was I got a chance to join a business accelerator program, which at the time I thought, you know, it was too good an opportunity to turn down. And that was what gave me the kick up the backside really to, to do it. Obviously in your case, it's a actual voluntary redundancy. Yeah. And then in other cases it can be enforced redundancy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely. But it um, gives you a kick to, to do it. Absolutely. I mean, I love my job Yeah. and it was never a case of like, I, I didn't like it. I absolutely loved my job, and you know, what have I, you done? It's just, <laughs> it's just, um, you know, I don't think I would have got to twenty-one years as a journalist if I didn't enjoy what I was doing. True. And there was never a moment I thought, I you know, I hate this. It was, it was, that was never the case. Um, I just really enjoyed what I was doing. It was just, this was for me, and you know, it was a, it's something for me to do differently, and you know, maybe to make more money, spend more time with the kids, just having a different direction and saying goodbye to my job that I was doing was really hard yeah and you know when I decided that I'm going to do this I spent two weeks just crying because I was excited but crying that I was leaving behind something and Mm. worried that what if I don't get that feeling back (laughs) yeah we'll go into that in a bit more detail later on because I think that's really a really common feature of when you move from employment to being on your own initially typically is what most startups do um it's quite a big change so we'll touch on that uh, shortly so one thing i wanted to delve a little bit more into there was obviously you've spent a career really interviewing entrepreneurs business founders etc um you, you kind of alluded to that it had rubbed off on you a little bit do you think without that you'd have still wanted to perhaps do your own thing or, or has it been being around that has really triggered it oh no, absolutely i think being around entrepreneurs um has definitely triggered it i mean when you speak to business owners and businesses who are doing really well and the sort of men and women behind it um I mean, one trait they've all got is that they're all hard working um they're really passionate um they're just you know, very they really naive believe, <laughs> yeah but they also believe in what they're doing yeah. and you know those that have made that step, made that journey, and it's working. You can see where they're going, you can see, and they're employing people, and you know, they're, they're part of a, of a bigger picture. And you, know, you can't help but walk away from that feeling excited for them, and then feeling excited about the possibilities of doing something yourself. And you've had a really unique look at the whole ecosystem, particularly obviously being based in Manchester. Um, I guess probably what surprised me when I first started out into business, I've got no one in my family who's in business. Um, in my in-laws I have, but not in my immediate family. And I didn't probably appreciate that there's so many different ways to make money. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I didn't appreciate that you can have very successful businesses in very unusual niches. Um, and I, I probably didn't, I've always just kind of had a very naive and narrow view of that growing up. But actually, you've probably had that real unique insight to see all of the different types of businesses, all of the different industries, and you know, the people behind the successes and, and obviously sometimes the failures. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, like, um, I'm a bit, a bit like yourself. Um, if I joined the business desk, it was just, you sort of think you need a product. Yeah. And then you sell that product and you need a shop or a website to, to do it. And that's not the case. You know, 
you know, who, who knew that you could make money on Instagram and social media? Yeah. And that's, you know, a big market now. So things have definitely um, changed. Do you think you, without the voluntary redundancy, would you be sat here right now as the owner of your own business? I don't think so. I, I think it, it might have happened in a couple of years' time. I think I might have needed a different kind of push to, to get to that point. Because um, I, I was really thinking about the next part of my journey. Yeah. And I've done 21 years with the um, company and I thought, where do I do the next 21 years? And You decided on your own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when I just remember something and I completely forgot about it. About seven, eight, eight years ago, I did actually tr- try to set up a business selling um, homemade soaps. I completely forgot about that. And how did it go? Um, not well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I call it the Posh Soap Company. In fact, I made, I did a website. I um, got the soaps which I had made for someone else and I tried to sell them online and I never sold a single soap. And <laughs> the only inquiry I had was during the pandemic when people were desperately looking for soaps. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, you never know, yeah. But it's interesting. So a lot of, a lot of people who start businesses, they will often start with a a pet project maybe yeah, that that yeah. you know fails quickly often um but that i'm sure you've probably learned quite a lot from that to help you set up this time presumably oh <laughs> or yeah, not i think i think what uh, made me think i need to do something that i'm going to be passionate about um and yeah so presumably you weren't passionate about so no no i mean i like using it and i like the smell of it <laughs> yeah but probably like selling it it probably wasn't my, my my passion project yeah so this is an interesting point then so obviously you have now set up your business doing what you've specialized in for so long yeah yeah in, in, the, in, in a bit of a different arena so i'm mainly doing pr marketing communications for other firms but my specialism is in writing in that content yeah and you know, writing it in a way that you know I, as an editor, would then want to use it. So that's where I'm um, coming from. So something sort of on the other side is a bit different. But it's interesting because you're still putting to use your skills oh, like hundred percent. Like it's, it's I think because sometimes not that it's always the wrong thing to do because it's not. Some people are very successful where they'll go into an arena they've never been in before and be successful. Yeah. However, if people are looking for a shall we say, a better bet. Uh, it's often looking at your own skills, your own connections, and what can you utilise? Because they're not necessarily the... Um, they're not always going to be a success, obviously, but it, it probably gives you a slightly better footing yeah. to get started. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. That's, that's, I mean, yeah. When I first launched this, um, it was looking at my skill set and what I'm good at. And, you know, when I've you know, gone and met clients, potential clients... I do feel like I'm doing my old job again because, yeah. you know, meeting somebody, it's getting to find out who they are and about their business and it's about write, writing about them and then trying to sell it into the um, press and media. So um, it's been a couple of times in the mornings I've, like, gone and taken my notepad with me and it has felt like that. So yeah, like definitely I've um, had to utilise my skills and my relationships to do this. So speaking about those old days, you sort of mentioned it's a sort of a bittersweet when you set up your own company and and, you know I can go into this in a bit of detail as well so you've obviously gone from a very busy work environment to then setting up on your own what has that transition been like from employee to owner of a startup um (laughs) so after a couple of weeks of crying and thinking about (laughs) what have I done um I'm now just trying to think you know not being able to switch off has been quite hard I think that's something that's probably massively underestimated. So I've I always struggled with that. I think, you know, when I, when I was an employee, I was very, very good at going in at eight o'clock, doing my work, clocking in. Whatever time I finished, sometimes it might have been late, but I clocked off. Yes. And so when I shut my eyes at, at night to go to sleep, I went to sleep. Yep. Whereas I think the biggest thing I struggled with was even I'd be sat watching telly and I'd be in the back of my mind playing through, well, if I do this, I can do that. And if I if I achieve this, I can do that. Or if I work on this bit really hard, then I can get that bit out by next week. And it, it never stopped. Um, and I don't think that ever stops. I know you're very early into the journey and that, that won't stop, but you be, you just get better at dealing with it, I think, and, yeah. and adjusting to that. But that's yeah. that was a really big challenge for me, I think, just not, not ever feeling like I could turn off. And my missus laughs at it because she, you know, I... I rarely would relax. I'd always wanted, 
I think that's a feature of trying to start your own business, to be honest, is you very rarely relax anyway. I think that's the sort of person that tends to start businesses. Yeah, I, I, and I've also found that I've said yes to a lot of things. Just went, yes, 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 because I thought, I need to start thinking about money and income coming in. So I just said yes, and I'm glad I said yes to everything that I've done because it's all been really interesting projects, interesting clients. But I have to remind myself that it's only me. Yeah. And I can't say yes to everything because I'm, I'm not doing other people not giving them good service so I have to now start thinking about how to be more strategic about it you know eventually I'd like to have a team of people that can do it but I'm not at that stage yet so I don't want to be taking people on and giving them false promises either so I'm really aware of that and you know I've we were talking about builders earlier you know can over promise on delivering such a thing and then you know you're always like disappointed I don't want to be that builder yeah so um, I'm already aware of that and um, you know, time management is more important to me than ever before. And I think that's something that people should understand, particularly when they're first starting out, is you might not be making loads of money when you first start out mm-hmm. because you, you're, you're busy trying to graph for that new work, but your commodity there is time. Yep. So I was 100% guilty of saying yes to everything. And a lot of the opportunities that were put in front of me I look back now, we're a complete waste of time, and I and I spent a long time chasing a unicorn. Yeah, when I should have been saying yes to the the stuff that would build the yes. business. Yeah. Um, one of the bits of advice I got from a good friend of mine, um, which is really obvious, but it but it's one I try and stay true to now is: is this going to help get you money? Mm-hmm. Whether that's it's doing something that's going to attract new clients, or it's doing something that's actually servicing the new clients, whatever it be. How close to the money is it? And if it's not, if it's going to waste your time, say no and and. Be confident enough to say no in the early stages, which I definitely wasn't. I was just a yes man. You know, any opportunity, even if it was absolutely rubbish, I'd say yes to. No, no I, I mean, <laughs> I've, I've said no to a few things because um, I knew straight away that um, it's Good. services for free, which, you know, I, don't, I can't afford to do that. Correct. So um, I was going to say, one of the things that I wanted was more, probably more time with the kids and a bit more freedom. Um, and that's, I just... In my head, when I launched this business, I thought in the summer, it'd be nice to like have a cottage somewhere, take the kids away. And I'll still be working, but it'd be six weeks off with the kids. And that's sort of my, um, in my head, that's my um, sort of dream. Um, but I've had to park that whole like yeah. idea of like, I'm going to be working three days a week. Because the, week the reality of that situation, you'd be in a cottage working on a laptop with kids running around. Yeah. The cottage is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> You've got yeah. a hose in one hand. You're typing with the other. Yeah. So, um yeah, I've, that's another thing I've, I've quite quickly realised is that um, because I am starting out that I'm not going to, is working full time, you know, and it might not be that, you know, I work um, nine to five, you know, working every day, but there is some flexibility. But, you know, the idea of like one day is going to be complete to myself, um, that's not going to happen just yet. No, probably not. Um, and, I, and again, that's, I think that's a good thing to raise because it's not easy. And it involves a lot of hard work and there's a lot of rubbish out there on the internet about get rich quick and all this sort of stuff. And it it paints a picture that, you know, there's an entrepreneurial lifestyle of just living the dream. And actually the reality of running a business, starting a business and even going on to be successful is it's a lot of hard work. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think I've ever interviewed an entrepreneur said this was easy. Exactly. (laughs) They've had to, you know, they've had to make sacrifices. They've, you know, worked in their bedroom for a year. They've, you know, relationships have been hard and they've sacrificed a lot to get to where they are. It's not an easy journey for anybody. And and for those, you know, people say, oh yeah, come to my webinar and I'll show you how to make a million pounds. You know, that's just complete BS. Yeah, absolutely. So touch upon sacrifices. You've you're quite in early into your journey as a startup owner, but you know, presumably you will have already had to make some sacrifices. What what do you think have been the biggest sacrifices you've had to make from from starting even only recently? I think my um, time, you know, just sounds, you know, like I enjoy going to the gym and when I was working, I used to always find time for the gym. You know, it was always that time, but right now I've been to the gym once in the last six weeks and been for a run twice. So it's like personal time that I'm uh, missing, but I'm still very early on in my journey. Just to interject, why do you think that is then? Why do you think you've not found the time now? Because I think when I was working, I knew I had to be in at eight, finish at four. 
and then you know I'll race home half an hour and I'm you know I always used to go past by the gym so I a quick 20 minutes and I do that three four times a week and then pick the kids up and I made my time at the gym because I'm working and I've got clients and I need to do their work I can't just leave at four and then go to the gym for half an hour you know if I remember to eat lunch that's a good thing weird isn't it because I did exactly the same so you know I, I would genuinely be sat on a say Saturday morning with the intention of watching the telly or Sunday morning watching match of the day whatever it be and I'd sit and watch 10 minutes of it and I'd just be thinking I could just get that bit more work done and I'd go and crack open the laptop and not not have that downtime um and I think it is hard to find that balance oh completely and I think because I'm so new and I'm because I have you know just started off recently um I spent I've spent a lot of time meeting people so a lot of like running around Great Manchester meeting people in different like cafes and stuff trying to get that business and, and now it's time to actually do the work yeah <laughs> so it's again finding that balance of like meeting people and actually doing the work because like I said I don't want to be that person that promises something and then can't deliver and I'm really conscious about that because I've been on the other side of it yeah and, and that's interesting so they've got you've got the whole needing to find new work as well as delivering on the yes, work yeah. and, I, and I think people sometimes get caught up in one or the other yeah. either they just focus too much on new work that they end up annoying all the clients yeah or they're just so focused on delivering such a perfect service for the clients, which should be commended, but isn't always that sensible that they don't focus on the new work and then the work drops off a cliff. You know, it's, it's, it's a slow process. We, and I'm picking stuff up, I'm learning stuff, and I'm like realising, actually, I don't need to say to somebody, oh, yeah, I'll meet you for coffee tomorrow. Yeah. You know, I'm happy to say now that I can't do it in two weeks because I've got quite a busy schedule. And it's just, I think... Uh, over the weeks, I'm just learning how to manage my time a bit better and knowing what to prioritise and what not to. So that transition between an office place and then, you know, being by yourself with a laptop, what's that been like? I find that hard. I, um, I miss having people to bounce ideas off. Yeah. Um, so when I left, it's, it wasn't just me that left. Um, one of my former colleagues, um, Lucy Roo, um, who was, used to work with me and my team, She's also left, so we're sort of. Um, it was, and it's been nice to have someone to speak to about leaving. Yeah. And you know, if I've got some, you know, if, if I've got ideas, I'm constantly ringing Lucy up and like, what do you think about this? So bouncing ideas off Lucy. But I miss that having that team, and you know, it'd be nice, you know, if I met a client and to be able to come back to maybe an office environment to say, I've got this client, you know, let's look at doing a twelve month strategy for them. But I'm on it, in it on my on my own, and yeah, it's a lonely world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and you know, eventually, I hope I, I could have a team. That's that's the aim, and I'll be able to do that. But at the moment, I really miss that. Yeah, and and I, I can echo that. I I on my background was in the police, obviously a very sort of camaraderie driven uh, environment. To then being in the law firm, which was slightly different, but still had people around you, etc. Um, and then, yeah, I remember that sort of first day on my own with my laptop, thinking. Right, no one to bounce ideas off, no one to help me out or share the work with or whatever it might be. And I think one of the most useful things that I did was have an, or slowly build a network of people in the similar boat, which sounds like you're already doing, which is great. Because I think you just still need people to bounce ideas off and you still need people to hopefully rant and rave at or share successes with. Um, yeah, and I think people underestimate how lonely it can be by yourself otherwise yeah oh definitely um at the Manchester news you know i miss having not just being in the office with a team of people i miss that buzzy newsy environment and you, you feel like you're part of something quite big and you know i've taken myself out of that and that's been hard to do but I, and, and i do miss it and it's getting easier yeah <laughs> i think i always miss yeah i think so like I, I, you know i've been out of the place crikey seven years still miss mm. the old colleagues and the laughs and you know all that camaraderie i don't miss obviously a lot of the rubbish that you get with being a police officer but i, I, I miss that and i probably never you know never get that back you might get your own team but it'd be slightly different because then you'll be the boss so it's slightly different dynamic again um but yeah it's uh, it's all part of the journey and I, and you know what what you have the benefit of being able to do i think when you've been in a workplace or number numerous workplaces You've got the benefit of 
picking up the best bits of leadership and things like that. So you'll be able to instill that in your team yeah. as and yeah. when that grows. I also found that, but um, I think you've had a similar experience. Um, in relationships, um, having strong relationships is really important no matter what you do. And, you know, when I've stepped out to do this, there are people that have reached out to me because they've had that relationship with me. It has been, you know, just, it's been incredible. I know a lot of the clients that have gone for now have been from people that I've met or people that they knew who I know. It's just that network of people. It's been so important. If you've got a good relationship, you know, there's nothing wrong with utilising that. Absolutely not. But at the same definitely time, should. you know, relationships are um, important and, you know, making sure that, you know, you make them work. And, you know, I've, I've, I've always felt like, I've always treated people like they were, you know, how I would want to be treated. And that's always been my thing. And, it's really sort of helped me now when I'm on my own, people being able to like ask me, you know, can you do something for me? You know, can I introduce you to so and so? And And it's funny how those relationships, even from years back, play a role. So when I was building the Defence Works, one of the things that we were looking to do was create some sort of like comedy sketches. So back when I was in the police, on my days off sometimes, bear in mind I was full time, I would go and volunteer at a radio station just because I'd have a Tuesday, Wednesday off. My mates were all at work, so I was like, well, I don't want to just sit around in Leeds doing nothing all day. So I went and volunteered at a radio station just for something to do. Um, met a couple of lads um, who had their own radio show. They went on to do comedy shows. So this is, you know, we're going back 10 years, maybe more. And then when I was building the Defence Works, reached back out to them, having had a good relationship with them, and it got them involved in the business. Um, and it's quite funny, because had I not got out of my comfort zone 10 over 10 years ago wouldn't have had that relationship and been able to get them involved mm. and it's it's funny over time you build up all these relationships and you probably don't appreciate what they're gonna mean right now to you but you know if anyone's thinking about starting their own business or maybe they're not thinking about it right now but they're planning to do it in five years time you'd be surprised what relationships right now will be useful yeah. to you then no, i completely agree i mean one of my clients is someone that i met 20 years ago so what is one of the biggest aspects or some of the biggest aspects that you think people need to consider before they make the jump? Um, so I would touch on before. I, I think make sure you're passionate about what you want to do because if you're not passionate about it, I don't think you're going to give the time and effort to do it. You know, If it's not working out, for example, the way you want, want it to work out, you can easily sort of go out the window and you're back to square one, wanting to do um, something else. Um, and like we said earlier, um, it's not going to be easy. You know, um, I was speaking to somebody who runs a digital agency and what they were saying is that because of the pandemic, a lot of people are now setting up their own businesses. And, yeah. you know, and set, you know, creating your own website is, is very easy to do these days. You can go on WordPress or GoDaddy or you know, one of the many programs you could do it yourself. But that's the easy bit. Um, but if people can't find your website on Google, then you're not going to sell any products. So it's other stuff to consider, like SEO and all that. And he was just saying the amount of people that are coming to him because they're like, nobody's coming to our website. And that's because that's the easy bit. There's so much more to um, consider. So with any business, it's not just, I've got an idea. It's, you know, how, how do you then sell that idea to people? How do you reach your audience? And it's a bit of a minefield. Truth oh, be told, because yeah. I, I very much thought, just need a website and then yeah. everyone will find me. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's not like that. that. You know, there's, like I say, there's setting up a website, there's even your branding, then there's getting people to somehow find your website. You've got social channels to maintain, you've got outreach to complete. It, the yeah. list is, is endless. endless. And also, you know, I think some people can spend too much time trying to get, let's say, the website right or get the yes. branding right. And... I found that if you if you want to do it, you could just do it. Correct. So um, you were talking about working mamas earlier. Um, I did that when I was on um, furlough. And I've been talking about it for years with my friend. Let's do something in this arena. And when I was furloughed, she ran me up. In fact, she just finished reading Karen Brady's book. Amazing. She's like, oh, you're on furlough. why don't we just do it? And instead of like spending like weeks then trying to create the perfect website and the perfect branding, we just did it. And within a week, we had a website up and running. And we've been doing it and we're on um, Instagram now and we're building our um, followers and engaging with them. And 
yes, you, you can't just do it. You know, don't spend too much time thinking about one aspect. I mean, do you know why people do that though? It's because it's the sexy bit. Yeah. So it's easy to spend easy. days and hours doing your logo. And I did this the first time, the logo, the brand, the website, because you feel like you're doing something yeah. worthwhile, but actually you're not. Yeah. You're wasting time because you're, your logo and your website is as good as they can be they're probably not going to be what gets you the money oh no definitely not i mean like my website took me a weekend to do and i just did it i was like i like this, i like this team and it works and I, I just did it because my website's only to show people what my services are yeah who you are what you do yeah. exactly yeah, yeah. it doesn't okay. and this is I, I always say it doesn't have to be perfect you know 70 percent is good enough if it gets to 70 or 80 percent just get it out the door yes. don't don't waste time on that extra 20 yes. percent or 30 percent because it won't make a single jot of difference yeah that was my thinking exactly i, like, I want to get this done and i just want to start and once i start getting the business and once i'm, I'm earning an income yeah I'll, I'll get someone to have a look at the website exactly that the seo and, and so when the security there. awareness training company that i started that started and it had a it had the world's worst name it was called the Business Fraud Prevention Partnership, or BFPP for short. Either way, definitely not catchy. Used to get introduced by the wrong name frequently. Um, but at the time, you know, it was a cheap logo. I spun up a website. It took me probably a weekend to do the whole look and feel because it was rubbish. But I built a business on that. Yeah. It didn't. No one really cared. And then when it got to the point where we were successful and we had staff and I, there was money in the business to be able to do it, we, we did a whole rebrand. And, um, you know, that helped us go on from strength to strength. But it it didn't matter that first bit that I had a terrible brand. They, you know, clients were just interested in, is it good? Does it do what you're trying to trying to get it set out to do? And can I afford it? Oh, That's God. all that really yeah, matters. Completely. I mean, my brand is me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I didn't spend ages thinking, oh, what name can I come up with? It was just Shalina Bago Media. You know, that, my but for you, that me. is perfect, isn't it? Because yeah. you are leveraging your relationships. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you were selling a widget, you know, you probably wouldn't have called it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> called it that, but yeah. but hundred percent like, and yeah. and that's the other thing. People, you know, if people have already got their own established brand, they need to use that. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and it's my friend actually who um, has a name um, Khalid, who's a lawyer and who I founded and working mamas with, and she's been my biggest sort of support and ally in this. And she's like, you don't need to, you don't need another name. You are your business. You are you. Good advice. And you know, it was yeah, it was great advice. And um, you know, and now every time I'm doing something like Taz, can I just run this by you? And just having that network of support has been really valuable to me. Just like having my husband support me, having friends who sort of you know, they know me and they know what I want to do. They also know Manchester really well. So it's having that support network has been really um, great. But like you were talking about earlier, um. I do miss not being able to go out to networking events and I don't know how long it's going to be before we're able to um, do that. And you know, when you're in a business like mine and yourself, yeah, you want to be out networking people yeah. and then know what you're doing. So if that's changed the dynamics and how you then reach to your, reach your clients. An so, interesting time to start a business. Yeah. I, oh, my business I interviewed that started off during the recession and 10 years later now are doing amazingly well. I keep thinking, if I well, can do this now. Well, and that's it, exactly. If you can survive now, you are going to be bulletproof exactly. going forward. Exactly, that, that was my um, thinking and it is risky, but I'm, I'm, a very, I'm, not, I'm a very risk-averse person actually. So Interesting. To, <laughs> to this was completely out of my comfort zone. Hmm, why is that then? How has that happened? You know, obviously, you're not obviously not that risk averse because you won't be sat here with your own business. Oh, it's definitely having taken involuntary redundancy because I know I've got, got a comfort. I've got comfort, uh, like a yeah. Yeah, so see, if, if I hadn't had that, would I have just walked out of a job that I really love? And well, that's fine. I think that's a, again, that's a misconception that people always think you have to risk everything, or or you have to have investment, mm. and you don't. No, you know. So when I started, I didn't risk everything. I had pretty much zero saving well I didn't have anything to start up with I started with a really bad laptop it used to crash all the time I had no investment money um all I had was when I left the law firm I got part-time work so I, I managed through a friend of a friend again just uh, network really managed to get a part-time lecturing job so I, what I did was and it was at the law school in town that that does part-time course on a weekend so I worked all week on my new business and at the weekend saturday sunday i went and did part-time lecturing 
But that, that was my kind of comfort blanket. But I think it's a misconception that you need to, you know, risk everything or you need to go and get a hundred grand of investment. You don't, mm. it, I, I, and I think that sometimes people just need to think, well, how could I do it? What could I do something part-time to get me going? Could I even launch it while I'm still working, just working in the evenings, yeah. um, you know, working five to nine rather than nine to five or both. Um, but that's, yeah, it's a big misconception that. Yeah, no, my outlet was £40 for my um, website and then I've had to return my laptop back to yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a new laptop this weekend. So that's my outgoing yeah. costs and, and just then doing the, I guess the boring bit, just says like, getting yourself signed up at a company's house, which is like £12. Yeah, <laughs> so, and it's dead easy really, it, isn't it? And that's really, that's another thing. I was on, online looking at doing this and there's so many businesses offering people to do that for them and charging them like £100. Um, no, you could go into a company's house and do it yourself quid. for £12. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, and the beauty about a sort of service-based business is the setup costs are minimal. minimal it's your yeah. time, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah. You obviously need a little bit, maybe just if you want to get a logo made or someone to help you with the website because you, you might not be able to. But you can still do loads of that yourself. Like there's Canva.com. You can, oh, Canva's you can, brilliant. Amazing, Canva exactly. So, yes, and that's completely free. You yeah. can, you know, you can beg, borrow a rubbish laptop like I did when I first yeah. started. It was my then girlfriend, now wife. It was her laptop of old, which was, and it was terrible. Um, and, and there's so much you can do for free. So I, when I first started BFPP, then the defense works, I thought my idea was so unique. I had to get it developed and I, I spent probably best part of a month researching how to develop it, what platforms I'd need to, to develop it on, um, and reaching out to investors, uh, and long story short, Again, another friend of mine just sat me down and went, Eddie, you, you're mental. You need to sit and actually just look what you're trying to build. It will be out there yeah. in some form. Whether that's, it's already been built and you can kind of use that to build upon, or it's using things like WordPress, which have a plugin library and you can basically plug things in together to make them talk to each other. Or there's websites like Zapier where you can link like a CRM system with a form and vice versa. Um, you can almost like fudge together a basic version of it. So what I ended up doing was I actually eventually found some software online that was open source, so free to use. And I use that as the platform to build upon. And I've got no technical background in terms of code or anything. Just use Google. Yeah. Googled how to set that up, yeah. set it up, yeah. created my first course, yeah. which was terrible, by the way. But that enabled me to get that first customer, 15 quid a month, yeah. um, which is laughable now, but at the time was a huge moment. And actually... I'd cut out all that need for investment or development costs and anything like that. And I'd built it for free. Yeah. And the platform that we built upon, which was free, um, yes, I did customize over time as the, the web, uh, as the business grew, but that was the platform um, that was still the platform we were servicing clients on when I sold the business. Yeah. Yeah. So something that I thought I needed to spend loads of money on or get investment and give precious equity away from, I used for free, built for free and was adequate enough to get an exit on the back of yeah, yeah. um it's just yeah it's amazing what you can get and what information particularly you know it's out there yeah, Go yeah. google's a, your yeah, friend absolutely and you know obviously you know if you're growing your business you know, hopefully you'll get to a stage where you can invest in it and pay a professional to come yeah. and like pay yourself uh, a wage yeah, and, <laughs> and, and, and have a look um but just because you've got a brand and some products trying to sell is is the hardest bit and just having a website isn't it enough uh, but you know it can be done can be done yeah it and can I, be done but i think that's a, a point is you know the, the harsh reality of starting a business is loads of businesses fail and you'll have seen lots come and go in yeah. your time and and it but that's something that we should you know highlight really because i think when you're going into starting your own business you have to have some acceptance that it could fail statistics tell yeah. you it will yeah and you know and, and embrace that because Correct. you can only learn from that journey and you know i've spoken to lot, lots of ent entrepreneurs who have failed and have started and not one has ever said to me i regret doing that because it's pushed them into doing something different or it's helped them be a better businessman or woman to then do the next thing so yeah it's just it's just being aware and you know, being aware sooner than rather than later <laughs> One of bits of my advice would be if someone's really passionate about starting their own business and maybe they don't even know what they want to do yet, would be if they can to try and get employed at a startup um, and, and 
get involved in it and learn from it if they're if they're at that point where they maybe you know don't yeah probably don't know what they want to do i think you can learn so much by being so close to a startup founder and kind of and trying to get really involved and potentially even if you're impressed you might get an opportunity within that to to sort of get oh, yeah. a, get a senior position anyway but what what other advice would you give to someone who is maybe sat listening thinking i'd like to start my own business but i'm i'm just not sure what to do next oh, d- definitely do your research and um look at the marketplace um look at what other people are doing <laughs> yep. you know um i don't think anything is unique no. You know, somebody's done a version of it. Others, like, you know, 20,000 people doing it all over the UK. It's okay to have a look at what they're doing and doing something similar. Competition is good. Absolutely. You know. um, And sometimes people are really scared of competition, but sometimes your competition is also your end goal. Yes. So when I first started, the company that acquired the Defence Works was, you know, one of the biggest companies in the world. Now, had I been intimidated and gone, oh, there's no point because they're already there, well, all I did was do something very similar, but just with a slightly different take on it. But then that company acquired the company. Yeah. So it's interesting. The yeah. competition, actually, you shouldn't ever, you know, I don't know, have a negative feeling towards competition. Oh, they, they should, A, push you to do better or push you to do do, do something different. different exactly. Um, but they also could be the people who might then acquire your company. So yeah, don't... Or, don't or somebody that, you know, you might collaborate with yeah. um, and... You don't ever look at somebody else and see them as your competition and you know you want to beat them it's not it's not a game so has there been anything particularly you've really struggled with in addition to what we've already mentioned so i think a lot of people struggle with this men and women but i think women talk about it a bit more that's this imposter syndrome you know i come from a very you know working class background you know my dad was a taxi driver my mum, you know, she was a machinist at home and didn't speak English. And, it, you know, and then to go from that to where I, I was, it was quite a journey. And I still had moments where, like, what am I doing here? Like, I was sat around a table full of people and, you know, they're really senior and, you know, just loads of pinch me moments. And I'd be, and someone might call me saying, and say to me, can you be part of a panel? And I'm like, why are you ringing me up? You know, and I've always been like happy to be asked, you know, and I've always done it. But almost but, shocked, even though you shouldn't shocked, be. Almost like, you know, and, you know, so, I've had, you know, struggle with a bit of self-doubt now and then, and... I think that's really common. Yeah. Like, well, not even really, I think it's very common. Because I, similar, you know, working class background, dad worked in a shop, mum was a housewife, um, and I, I grew up in Scunthorpe, which is the, the most working class northern town you could ever come across stereotypical sort of steel working town and then I obviously was in the police joined the law firm which was a international law firm and you know surrounded by people Cambridge Oxford educated and I'm definitely not um and and I probably had imposter syndrome there but then when I started my own business it was like amplified even more in a way because I was like oh well now I definitely am yeah. blagging it yeah <laughs> even yeah. though you're not clearly because you're you know you're obviously very skilled in what you do but you you weirdly feel like you are and so yeah you know I, i've been invited to panels i was invited to, to nice and prague to do some talks and i'm thinking why are you inviting me yeah. Yeah. but but people shouldn't underestimate what value they can probably yeah, yeah, bring absolutely and i'm, and I'm just telling people that i'm winging it because i'm <laughs> not like winging it makes it almost like you're not doing a great job but um you mentioned earlier on obviously you've got children so how many children have you got, if you don't mind me asking? I've got two, a five-year-old and a um, two-year-old. Okay, well, I feel your pain. I've got an 11-month-old. <laughs> so, yeah, and yeah, working around kids isn't the easiest thing <laughs> to no. do. So just working around um, my two-year-old, and it's constantly, mummy, 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 can I have a snack? Mummy, can I do this? Mummy, can I watch, watch that? And it's nice that she's there and... Of course, you, you yeah. Know, yeah. <laughs> and, That's very polite of you yeah. to say. <laughs> But it's hard. It's hard working around children, you know, um, the school drop-offs, the pickups, and then I've got football and swimming and trying to juggle work and then making dinner and, and doing all the other stuff around that is, it's a juggle. Yeah. And I, and I, I, you know, I bet there are parents listening to this who definitely can relate to that. You know, I, I can, you know, thankfully my wife is extremely hands-on more, more so than I. So I have less of a pressure to do a lot of that stuff, but it's it's a hard balance still to strike when you're trying to grow start a business grow a business finding time and making time it's really important um obviously 
but not easy. It's uh, definitely not easy. But now I'm thinking, you know, I've got this business. I've got a young girl. I've got, you know, I've got, I've got, I've got a son as well. And I want them to be proud of me and what mummy's done. So one of the things when um, I left journalism, I left the mainstream news, was that oh, my kids might never know me as a journalist. And True. to me, that was sad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they might read about the stuff I've done. They might read the stuff that I've written about. But I felt like they might not know me in their young life as a journalist. But now I'm thinking... I want them to know me as a mum who's got her own business and she's doing great things and I want to be a role model for both of them. Yeah. So and, and that's really important to me and you know when I started this I think I always had that in the back of my head that I want to create something that they will also be proud of. And that drives into your passion yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Because you know you are going to be passionate about something because that's a good driver for yeah. you as well. Yeah definitely and it's not about money and if I can earn what I earned before, you know, that's great. If I earn more than that, that's a bonus. And, and that's a typical goal for people who start out. It was for me. Like if I, my goal was always, if I can earn by myself what I was earning in my job, that is amazing. Yeah. And that, once you get to that, it frees you completely because then you go, right, well, I've done that. Yeah. So now I'm back to, I'm back at level yes. playing field. Now, now what can I do? Yeah. Now it's the exciting bit. Now what can I really achieve? And, you know, if I, once I've got my wage in the bag, I can start, you know, uh, hiring people. I mean, for me, actually, weirdly, I, so I got to the point in the business where I could take the wage I would have done, but I didn't. I, ju I just took a basic and, and kept uh, reinvesting it because I'm, uh, I guess I'm foolish maybe, but just wanted to keep reinvesting it to grow the business. Um, but it, I think that moment of, yeah, being able to realise you can take that wage if you yeah. need it yeah. is is really yeah. powerful. Yeah, and that's the stage that I want to, want to um, get at. And I think that'll be, it's definitely achiev achievable. So I'm quite excited about that. And if I could get that wage and not work as hard, um, even better. But I, don't, I can't see that happening. Your work, <laughs> thing is, it feels different though. It, you don't, I don't think you, you will work more hours yeah. and you will work harder in a way. But when you're working for yourself, it's very different. Or yeah. well, that's my experience of it. I, I, I've never really felt tired or exhausted with building my own thing. But when I was building, what it felt like to me when I was like, particularly at the law firm, I felt like I was building someone else's dream, not mine. Mm -hmm. But when you're building your own dream, it's not as tiring, weirdly. Mm -hmm. If you think, um, obviously, parents listening, they might be worried that they can't do it if they've got kids or that that's going to be a limitation to them? Do you think that's... Oh, no. Um, I think people understand you, people got kids. Yeah. And you have to work around. Whether you're employed or self-employed, it doesn't make a difference. There's a better understanding that we have to work around kids. And it's, it's that balancing act. Yeah. And it's just and you have to balance that, whether you're working or whether you're working for yourself. And it's just how, how you manage, again, it's all about time management as well, isn't it? It's yep. how you manage that time, making sure that your kids get from you what they need to and you're then putting your time into your business when you, when you can. And you know, is that something that you can do or you can't do? It's something you have to ask yourself. And you know, do you make some sacrifices? So um, you will be working longer hours and you might not be able to like make that football. Or get trip. to the gym. Or, yeah, or... yeah, so... Um, it's just, I think it's about having realistic expectations. Like we said, you're never going to make money overnight. No, you're not going to be driving the, the red Lambo tomorrow. Uh, you're not going to be in that mansion yeah. in a year. And that's the thing we, we mentioned actually before we sort of uh, started recording was everything takes quite a long time. Yeah. And there's a, that's the biggest misconception that I dealt with myself as well was I thought it happened not overnight. I never believe in overnight success stories, but I did think it might happen quicker. Yeah. Um, and even you know even even by standards, my journey was still quite quick. But that a lot of that was luck. Yeah. Um, so I think people when they do start off in the journey, just some awareness that it will take quite a long time, yes, and you yeah. need to be you need to be hard working, you need to be persistent, but give it time because yes. it it takes time to build something. So I mean, hopefully, if you speak to me in a year's time, I've got a different Absolutely. story to um, tell. I mean, because I've worked for such a long time, I'm a bit conditioned into being an employee. And it's hard to get out of that mindset that you are now your own boss. And I still look at LinkedIn at, at jobs, and it's not because I'm serious about applying for a <laughs> yeah. job. I'm still constantly looking at what other opportunities yeah. there are because 
I guess there's a bit of worry in me, like what if it doesn't work out or what if I don't get the money in to pay my bills? So I guess, you know, just, I guess it's a mindset, isn't it? And it's getting out of that employee mindset into, you know, being your own boss mindset. It's, that doesn't happen overnight. No, it doesn't. And it, it, yeah, it, exactly. It's gradual and it yeah. takes a little bit of time. And um, when you, there'll be certain goals you hit, which will start to chip away at that. Yeah. And one of them will be, when can I take that that wage, for example? Yes, exactly. Um, and that'll be a key one because yeah. then you'll be like, actually, yeah, I've, I've got this and now I can build on this to make yeah. it grow. And when you first get that first, I guess, paycheck from the first client, yeah. that's quite a special moment. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, before I got my clients on board and I was looking at LinkedIn, like, what else can I do if I don't get any clients? And I want to look at LinkedIn and look at the, um, the wage that in a particular job is offering. And I'm like, I should make more than that. Uh, and this <laughs> and, is the other thing I think. No, it's true though, because... It's, I think it's easier to earn a sort of wage than people think it is. Yeah. So typical take-home pay is not that difficult to achieve mm. if you know what you're doing in yeah. terms of, you know, you, you could do any job and probably be able to achieve that as a self-employed person quite easily. That sounds a little bit misleading, but what I mean by that is in your head, if you're paid... £25,000 a year, you think you've got to get £25,000 a year, but it's not by the time you've been taxed and stuff. You never get £25,000 in your pocket. Yeah. So it's a different it's yeah. a different goal than what people initially think it is. Yeah, absolutely. And what I did was like um, sort of split my wage from when I work, was working to a daily rate. Yep. And then went off that. And if I could make more... That's a really good way. Rate. That's a really good way of doing it. Yeah, so people who are listening... Break down what you get monthly, not your total salary, what you get monthly in your bank account. Break that down by working days. Yeah. And you'll probably be upset. Yeah, yeah you'd be surprised actually. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, then, you, then you can you can equate that to, well, if I set up this or that or whatever it be, I only need to sell X of it or Y of it yeah. to achieve more. Exactly. Yeah. So again, you know, that's only been a transition in the last couple of weeks in trying to get your head around that. Yep. So... You know, it's, for me, it has definitely been a, a journey and you know, I'm still learning. Of you know. course. Hey, look, I, you know, I, I'm still learning. You know, I, I've i exited a business and I'm, I'm starting a new journey because I can't sit still, clearly. Um, but I'm still learning. And, I, and, I, and for me, that's the bit that I love. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I, feel, I feel like I'm a better mum and a better wife and you know, everything just fits into place. I just need my builder to finish my living room off and <laughs> I could get my house back and really sort of get focused. <laughs> Fab. So hopefully, you know, we'll speak again in the not too distant future, hopefully, a year's yeah. time. Um, plans for the business? At the moment, it's um, just starting off small, I guess, you know, being re again realistic about how much I can do and just making sure that the clients that I've got at the moment, you know, that the clients that hopefully will stay with me and, you know, next year, they, you know, I'm growing with them as well. Mm -hmm. You know, two of my clients are startups and, you know, I'm excited to see where they go. Yeah, their success and is your success exactly, and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's doing that. But eventually I'd like to have a team of people and that might be in a year's time, that might be a couple of years time. I, I, I don't know yet, but, you know, when you start this journey, you don't know where it's going to take you. It might be that I end up adding a different element to my business. Yep. It might, I might see that another part of my business is actually doing better and I focus on that. I don't know. And that's what, I think that's an exciting part. Yeah, that's scary and exciting. Because we're, we're at the dawn of it at the moment. Yep. So yep. it'll be really interesting to see how your business grows. That's Shalina Begum, just weeks into her journey of her new startup, Shalina Begum Media. And as you heard, she made her leap of faith following an offer of voluntary redundancy, all whilst juggling being a busy mum of two. And as we mentioned during the episode, there are often many different triggers to people wanting to make that jump. So if you're sat listening to this podcast thinking about starting a business, what might your trigger be? Or perhaps you've already made the jump yourself. What was your trigger? I'd love to hear it. Thanks so much for listening to this episode. You can subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and you can also find out more about how to take that first step into starting your business without the bullshit over at gofounder.com. 
Special thanks to Shalina Begum and to you for listening to Business Knobs from GoFounder.